Hi, today I'm going to show you how you can calibrate any COMSOL multiphysics material model using M calibration. M calibration has a built in support and a built in solver for many of the material models that are available in COMSOL multiphysics. But there are some material models that are not available yet, and we're working on implementing them. But for these combinations of material models that are not available, you can still calibrate them using M calibration. And today I'm going to show you how you can do that. And, um, the material model that I will try to work with here is a uh, hyperelastic model, the extended tube model, and I'm going to add Mullins damage to it. So that's a combination that's still not available in M calibration as a solver, but we can work with it anyway. So to do this, I will first select the material model uh, template that I want to use here. So I'm going to switch over to Comsol, and I'm going to pick first a hyperelastic model. I'm going to pick extended to mall. Then I'm going to say OK. And here is my material model. It's not what I was interested in. I want this one plus the Mullins damage, but this is a starting point that's somewhat similar to where I want to be. Then I'm going to add a um, virtual load case that I want to investigate here. I'm going to add a segment, say 40% strain. I want to do 100 data points, and here it is. I'm going to call this tension, and then I save this one. I can save this file, uh, material model YouTube. Since this has a built-in solver to it, I can just run it and I get the result. So that's, that's good and all. But I want to make sure we can add the, the Mullins damage to this model. So what I will do is to open this load case. I go to miscellaneous, and I'm going to change the solver from default, which in this case is M calibration, down to console. And I'm going to save this one. So if I run this one, then uh, M calibration will actually launch console and solve this problem this calculation using Comsol Multiphysics as the FE solver. So I'm going to just do that by clicking Run once. And the calculation has now finished. You can see the stress strain prediction uh, when uh, calculated from the Comsol Multiphysics solver. What I want to do now is take a look at the files that were generated. So I'm going to switch over to the directory where we were located. I'm going to see that there is a directory that was created for us here by M calibration. Now opening this, and the, here we will find the console files. So console generated, uh, M calibration generated this console file, which it then ran for us. And here is the class file. So what I can do in this case, I can, I can actually open this file and we can take a look at it. So I just launched a blank window of console. I'm going to go File, and Open. And then I'm going to select this class file that M calibration generated. OK, so the model has finished loading. I can now take a look at some of the settings here. We'll see that we have our hyperelastic material model here. And uh, what I want to do is I want to add on to this a Mullins effect. I want to use the Ogden Roxbury Mullins effect. I want this parameter to be 0 0.9, 0 0.9. And the formation, this one will make 0 .0 0 0.1. And there is a reason why I don't let them be the default values, because then we can't export them cleanly, as, as you will see. So here are the parameters that I want to use. I'm going to now save this model that we slightly modified. I'm going to save it as And call this um, E tube with Mullins. But I don't want to save it as a I want to save it as a Java file. So I'm saving this as a Java file. 
Here, here are the files we created. I'm going to take this E2 Vidyaba file. I'm going to uh, copy it up a directory. And here it is. I'm going to open this with a text editor. The purpose of, of all of these steps is to extract the specific console commands that are needed to create the Mullins effect. And here they are. These, these are the parameters. So I'm going to copy them at the end of this file here. Copy and paste it in here. And I'm going to also copy the, the, the extended tube model parameters. So I'm going to just find them here. By scrolling up, we see the solution parameters here, and we have, we have um, the definition right here. So we have create hyperelastic model. And here are the, the key parameters. I'm going to copy those. I'm going to paste them in just before this one. I'm going to switch that and the statement where we set the selection in the end. So here are the, the new template that I want to work with uh, for extended tube model with the Mullins damage. So to calibrate this, we need to replace, this is the variable, a value that should be variables. Variable. So I'm going to call it GCET, and I'm going to have this nomenclature where I have a, a percent sign and then the name, and then a value. These will then become variables in M calibration in a minute. So I'm just going to go through and do this. And that's the end of those. I can copy these to the clipboard now, and then I'm going to switch back to M calibration. And I'm going to create a new material model that I want to work with. So I'm going to pick console template. And this is the whole point of doing this. I can paste in these uh, Java commands now that we generated through the console multiphysics solver. If I say OK, we have these sort of parameters now for Extend it to model with the Mullins damage. And I'm going to save this as a different file. And um, now we should be able to run this as, as we typically do. So this load case has to be console multiphysics as the solver because M calibration doesn't know of this template yet. So I can run this and that should give us the predictions of this material model combination. And the calculation has not finished. Um, see that this is a, a very straightforward way of calibrating any of the built-in material models in console multiphysics. It's certainly slower than it is when uh, you use one of the M calibration supported models, but this is fully automatic and therefore an interesting way to calibrate some of the material models that we haven't been able to implement internally yet. I hope you found this useful and let me know if you have any questions below.